Hello there, welcome back. In this video we're going to be taking a quick look at the Campark 12 megapixel game camera. Now this is actually the cheapest one that I have ever had. This at the current time when I'm reviewing this is under 50 English pounds, which is very very cheap for a game cam. Well, ultimately it's all about the quality of the video and the quality of the pictures. So later in the video you'll see what I have have shot using this game cam in roughly two weeks on trial. It's been set in various places in woodland and open fields in all sorts of conditions as well. We've had fairly poor weather in the last two weeks so it's had very very cold. I think it got down to minus eight centigrade. We've had a little bit of snow, we've had a lot of wet, we've had driving rain. We've had a little bit of sunshine but not much so it has been well tested and it needed to be because this is the first one that's been IP56. 56 is dust proof and weatherproof, fully weatherproof, so you can stand there with a hose on it or have it in driving rain and it would not let water in. Now this has got the full 42 infrared LEDs on here, so it does throw a light out, albeit invisible light or largely invisible light, to a good distance. And that distance is roughly 75 feet or 22 meters. Like most game cams, maybe 5% or less of the pictures that it takes will be usable, but it did a decent job. It's got a standard strap on to attach to a tree or a rock or something, and that fastens just as pretty much every other game cam does. You feed it through here, snap it shut, it locks it in place. What is different to a lot of the game cams that I've tested is the clasps on here and I'll give you a close-up of those in a minute but they are not as substantial as previous game cams that I've tested however they do a good job and I can't really complain it is after all a sub 50 pound game cam and one thing I have found that this particular camera beats any of my other ones with for some bizarre reason is battery life it took roughly 1300 pieces of footage that includes videos and pictures and the battery charge never moved I've never had one do that normally it would probably eat up half the battery power um, but this one just seems to go on and on and on and the quality of the pictures and video is pretty good so it's not as if it's making concessions there so let's take a close look at it and I'll show you the features you've got your normal eight AA batteries in there, which has a cover on, stop them dropping out. Got a 2.4 inch screen here, which is full color. Little speaker, control buttons, on, off, and set up. You've also got a couple of audio visual inputs, and you've got space for a mini, no, sorry, not mini, micro SD card. That's it in there. I don't know whether you can see that. I'll try and pop it out. There you go. Most of them take the ordinary size SD card. This one only takes micro. You go from off to setup, and then you're straight into the menu when you press this button. Okay, so you've got, first one is mode, and you can set the camera or also the video or camera and video. So you can take one, two, or three pictures and then a short video. Next one, photo resolution. Anything from one megapixel to 12, I always have it set on the best quality one. Next one, photo series. You can choose to take one photo, two photos, or three photos. I generally have it set on two. Next one, video resolution. I always have it set on the highest one, which is full HD. Next one, video length. And this one you can actually set up to 10 minutes. So you can take a 10 minute continuous video which is a hell of a long time. So anywhere from three seconds to 10 minutes, that's pretty impressive. I generally have that set on about 30 seconds. Audio recording, that just gives you the option to record sound or not. I always have it on. Next one is shot lag. Now that is the time between it taking the burst of photos and video. If you have it set too low, it, and if it's in a busy area, there's a lot of birds feeding or something, 
you might end up with a hell of a lot of little short videos that would confuse this. So I generally set it to about 15 seconds. That's like a reset time. Sensitivity of the motion sensors. The motion sensor is basically that. That's what detects motion. I set it on medium. You can have low or high. So high if you're in an area where there's very little traffic from animals. Low if it's in an area, say you on a bird table, you know, you don't want slight little things like a fallen peanut setting it off. And middle if you don't really know what to expect. Yeah, we've also got one called target recording time. I don't bother with that. The time lapse, I don't bother with that. Although it would be useful if you wanted to take, say, the progression of a, a sunset or a dawn sunrise or something and then put it all into a video language. Obviously, it's set in English here. You can change it, though. Time and date. I do have the time and date set on this thing, but it doesn't show on the photos. Uh, talking of photos, photo stamp, that would basically be to stamp the time and date on the photo. Password protection, you can set up a password, so if anybody steals this, they wouldn't be able to use it. I don't use that. Beep sound, that takes the beep off the control panel. I don't alter that. Format memory card. You would format the card before you use this just to make sure there's nothing on the card that would interfere with any recording. So, oh, notification. All data will be deleted. Yes or no? Yes. That's it. Formatted, ready to go. Serial number, that's just the number of this particular model. Don't need that. Reset settings, that would take everything back to a default. Don't need that version that's just more details about this particular camera and then we're back to the start hell of a lot of features there in a very cheap camera okay now let's have a look at the highlights of the pictures and videos that this thing took over the two-week trial period And now you probably want to hear what I think of it. Well, I've seen a lot of game cam reviews on YouTube. And in this price bracket, which currently is under £50, this performs well above the actual cost of it. Well above. Um, yeah, I would recommend it. I, I cannot really say much more. The clasps on it slightly concern me, but it is well made. And... It's just a good game cam. If you're looking to get into the game cam hobby or genre, this would be a very good starting point. If you found this video review useful, please hit the thumbs up button. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.